four things you must absolutely keep private. But first, like and subscribe to the channel and share this content. Hit the notification bell so that you're aware when I post a brand new video. Four things you must absolutely keep private. Keep it to yourself. Don't tell anybody. These are specifically for people in their 20s because I would like to believe that people past the age of 30 already know that you keep these things to yourself. But number one, how much money you make. It is nobody's business how much money you make unless they are your, your accountant, unless they're an IRS professional. They do not need to know how much money you make. Number one, it's nobody's business. Number two, it's nobody's business. And number three, it sounds very tacky and it sounds like you're not accustomed to having anything when you walk around telling people how much you make per hour. I've heard this and continue to hear this. Yeah, I make $17 an hour. I make $22 an hour. Yeah, I, so I get paid this much every two weeks. Nobody needs to know. Unless they are helping you to pay bills and you are doing that together, you should not walk around telling people how much you make. Reason being is because it's nobody's business. But number two, you make yourself susceptible to people asking you for money. Do you not understand that the more you tell people you have, the more they will want from you? And I'm not saying be not be a generous person, but don't put it all out there. I am a firm believer in look gracious, look beautiful, look classy, look elegant, keep yourself together. But you don't have to be a walking target for somebody to take advantage of you. And when you, quote, look like money, when you, quote, constantly talk about your money, when you, quote, constantly talk about all the money that you have and all the money you're going to get and all of your investments and all of these things, you make yourself a walking target for people who want to take advantage of you. I've learned that over the years. For me, I think being truly wealthy and having money, the more money you have, the less you care about looking like money. Now, hear me out. I'm not saying that you walk around looking tacky and don't care about how you look, but you can have luxury bank account. You can have a luxury five-figure, six-figure bank account, but you can look like an average person just doing the day-to-day -day thing. I actually think that's wise. I'm the kind of person that it doesn't matter how much money I have, I am going to live sensibly. I am going to have a decent car. I'm going to wear just decent, regular clothes. I'm going to look nice, always going to look cute. But I'm not going to do the most because I don't want to be a target for anyone. And I think for people in their 20s, because of this social media age, because we live in the whole, you know, we got to floss on people. We got to let people know what we have. The very braggadocious age we live in, people really want to show their wealth, show their money, show their financial, you know, status. And that's not wise. I think the more money you acquire, the more low key you need to get, which means the more money you get, the more quiet you get. People like to talk about this old money aesthetic, even with the old money aesthetic, you're still trying to signify to people that you have money that you might not even have. And once again, you're making yourself to be a target for somebody to take advantage of you, constantly ask for money. And let's not forget, there are people out here who do criminal activities. Why would you want to make yourself more susceptible to criminal activities by telling people about all the money and things that you have? And then also, let's not forget about jealous, hateful, spiteful people who see you leveling up, see you doing well, and they begin to envy what you say you have. And then half the time, a lot of people are just bluffing. They don't really have a lot of money. They don't really have a lot of status, but it makes them feel good to have other people fawn all over them about what they think they have. None of this stuff is helpful for you as a woman. 
So if you truly do have wealth, if you truly do make a good hourly rate, you make a good salary, you make all these different things, you're able to have all this lavish stuff, get quiet and enjoy your blessings, enjoy your money, enjoy your wealth quietly. Stop telling everybody because I think you benefit more from quietly winning than being loud and drawing attention to yourself. And now you constantly have to be on the defensive and defend yourself in any moment because you're telling everybody about what you have. So number one, keep your financial status and your money, how much you have of it to yourself. Number one. Number two, Thing that you need to keep private your feminine hygiene and your feminine routines or your lack thereof somewhere along the lines people have begun to think women have begun to think that it is cool or cute to tell people things like yeah I don't wash my hands every time I go to the bathroom N not I I wash my hands every time but there are some women who are glorifying having less than up to par hygiene. It's not cute to tell somebody that you don't wash your witch McCallin and them every day. It's not cute to tell people you don't change underwear every day. You don't change your panties every day. It's not cute to tell people these things. First of all, that's disgusting. You should be washing your hands every time you leave the restroom. You should be showering as a woman, I believe twice a day at least. But if for some odd reason you don't do those things, don't tell anybody. See, once again, going back to the social media age, because everybody has a platform and everybody wants their opinion known and everybody wants intention and everybody wants everybody to look at me. Sometimes you're trying to get attention by saying the wrong things. Nasty hygiene habits or lack thereof is not something that you should be telling people. If you don't use deodorant, which again, I'm not sure why you would not want to, but if you don't, you don't have to get online and say, I don't use deodorant and I'm proud of it. It's like women have gotten this idea that the nastier they are, the less hygienic they are, the more people like that, I guess, in their plea to be relatable, they're being disgusting. And once again, as a feminine woman, that don't apply to us. That does not apply to us. We shower twice a day. We wear deodorant. We wash our hands after every time we go to the restroom. And we put lotion on our hands afterwards so that we can still have soft, supple skin. But for women who glorify being disgusting and having no hygiene, I'm trying to help you. Keep it to yourself. If you have that thing that you just don't do, keep it to yourself. Because when you put that out there... You might think that you have people on the internet that are relating to you and they're saying, oh, that's cool. I don't shave my arms either. That's cool. I don't do this. I don't do that. There are going to be a whole host of other people looking at you like you're disgusting. And that's when you open up the opportunity for being, you know, harassed and people saying things to you and you're going to feel like you're being belittled and bullied and all this other stuff when you could have simply just kept your mouth shut and turned your camera off and kept that to yourself all right so number two your lack of hygiene habits nobody needs to know just keep it to yourself all right and number three thing that you absolutely need to keep private and nobody needs to know your relationship issues so this is specifically for everybody, actually. This is for married, single, dating, whatever. Keep that stuff to yourself, especially if you know that you're going to stay with the problem. So if you're in a relationship with a guy who constantly cheats on you and you have accepted his cheating, but you still get upset every time he cheats, don't turn to the internet or get on the phone and tell somebody what he's doing. Once again, this is not for feminine, confident women because we don't accept this behavior as normal. We do not accept this function as functional. But this is for women who are intent on accepting dysfunction. If you choose to do that, which I absolutely encourage you not to. But if you are in a place, and I'm not trying to be overly judgmental, but if you are in a headspace right now where you just feel like you just don't have the energy to fight, you're just accepting everything right now. 
keep it to yourself, especially if you're not going to fix the problem. So using the cheating example, if you're with a guy who he's a dusty and he's just out and about doing whatever, don't get on the phone telling everybody about what he's doing, knowing that you're going to still stay with him. Just quietly let him do what he does until you figure out your self-worth, your self-value, and get away from the loser, okay? But keep it to yourself because when you constantly tell people about the behavior and not just cheating, but any negative behavior that you're tolerating over time, it begins to look less like that person has an issue and more like you have an issue. And you don't want to present yourself as a foolish, unwise woman. So keep the nasty negative things that you're tolerating, like relationship issues, any other thing that you're accepting as normal that's not normal right now. Keep that to yourself so that you're not out here looking foolish in the eyes of other people and you're giving yourself time to figure it out without criticism, all right? And the number four thing that you absolutely need to keep to yourself, nobody needs to know, nobody even asked, you need to keep all of your past relationship issues to yourself especially when you're in a new relationship. We live in this day and age of pop the balloon and all these other dating reality shows and body count and they want to know this and they want to know that. Unless they were in your past or they have the ability to go in and fix your past, your past is the past for a reason. Everybody doesn't need to know. Even someone who you're about to marry, if it is not pertinent to their medical well-being, they don't need to know about your past. They don't need to know about how many people you slept with. They don't need to know about all these other things. They don't know, need to know about your criminal history as long as it's not following you into the future. Learn how to keep your past to yourself. Now, of course, as time goes on, if you're in a relationship that's deep, you're married, you might wanna display or express a little bit of your past and tell them about some things. But if it's things that make you look horrible, keep it to yourself. Those things, as they say, take it to the grave, take it to the grave. Keep it between you and the Lord, okay? Everybody doesn't need to know. And especially, don't get online out of this plea, once again, to get attention and seem relatable. You're telling people about your sordid past, and now when you think you're being relatable and it's admirable, people are just judging you. Once again, you don't want to make yourself anybody's entertainment. So learn how to keep your past in the past. Keep it private. It's your private life for a reason. Think about your image as a woman. What is the image you want to betray to the world? What is the image you want to display to the world? When you put out all of these private things about yourself, you are creating an image. And a lot of times people will treat you based on the image that you've created. So if you've created an image of yourself being a loose-lipped woman who lacks hygiene, deals with the cheater, and just have a disgusting, sordid past, people are going to constantly be judging you. But if you decide to be a feminine, classy, under uh, you know, well-kept woman, a woman with self-control, and you just keep those things to yourself, you have the opportunity to create the image that someone wouldn't even know that you did some of the things you did or that you went through some of the things you went through. You have power to create how people see you. You create your image. So have self-control and keep these four things to yourself because nobody needs to know, all right? Like and subscribe to the channel and share this content. Hit the notification bell so that you're aware when I post a brand new video. If you watch this video until the very end, Put the high hill emoji in the comment section. I absolutely love to see it. And share this content. Other women need to hear this. All right? Hit the like button. Take care.